Okay, welcome back to Character Rigging for Beginners. Uh, this is part three. Um, and this part is actually not essential for rigging. Uh, it's just something that we can use to help test our weight and get um, our, while we're painting weights and we're getting everything set. Um, in the last tutorial, I talked a lot about um, you know moving and bending your model and painting weights as it's bending. Um, some places will have full range of motion animations that move each joint individually, um, sometimes called um, ROM animations, um, that will go through and, and animate each of the joints in particular ways. Um, and that's you know, fine for them, but uh, can take a lot of work. And a lot of times, until we're moving our character in a specific way, uh, we're not going to notice some of the stuff that's going on. So what we're going to be doing in this is we're actually going to be using Maya's uh, Human IK system to use uh, some of Maya's default mocap that they have. So uh, if you've never worked with mocap um, before, um, this will be uh, all new to you, um, and but it's it's real basic and it's real simple. And we're just going to set up a motion capture example on our Tesla model here, so that we can see how our weights are deforming. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to open up our Human IK tool, and is this guy right up here, the little man that's right here? You can press that button, um, and what should come up first, it should look like this, okay? So it'll look like this, and it gives you these options. It has a character here, which is at none, and then under create, you have a create skeleton, you have a create control rig, create character definition, create custom rig mapping, quick rig tool, and some import samples, import human IK example, import animation example, and they get uh, human IK and mocap examples uh, online. So uh, we've already created our skeleton. We're skinning right now. Uh, we're painting weights. We're getting that uh, set up. So we don't need that. We're going to be making our own rig. The control rig that it makes is really, really rudimentary. It's just not going to give you um, very much at all to work with. So. We're not worrying about those two ones. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have our character here, uh, and we're going to, you don't even need to have anything selected. Or, but the first thing we need to do is we need to create a character definition. So we'll click Create Character Do Definition. It automatically populates if this is your first time uh, doing this and messing with this. It's going to show up as Character 1. Mine shows as Character 2. Um, and then if you want to rename it, you can come over here to the blue square, and there's a rename character button uh, right here. So we'll rename it to Tesla, and we'll hit OK. All right, so right now we've got a, a big red X here, OK? We're not set up. We're not ready to go to connect everything. We don't have our character defined. So the character definition is just assigning these bones in our model to the corresponding bones that the human IK is looking for. Okay, And they can be named anything um, over here, but hopefully you've named them cor correctly and in a manner that you really understand uh, so you know what you're clicking on. Um, and we're just going to be assigning them. So. Uh, the first thing that we'll do is we'll notice that this one is our hips and this is our spine. So for our spine, I have my root node right here, and I'll come over and I'll click on the spine, and I'll right-click on that, and I'll click Assign Selected Bone. When it comes in, you'll notice it tells you, hey, this is a human IK node. It's the spine, and the bone that is set to it is the root skin. And what we have selected in our scene, or the scene selection, is also the root uh, underscore SK uh, joint that is selected. Okay, 
So that is set. It's turned green. That's great. Okay, then there's these little drop-down menus here. Obviously, we have our lower back, um, our mid-back, and our upper back. Um, and these are all part of our spine. And you'll notice it's not showing every single joint that we have, and sometimes there will be even more. But there are these little circles with a little diamond here. If we click on that, it says, it highlights and says, to spine view. So we we'll click on that, and it shows us all of these spines here, one through nine. Okay. Now, ignore the fact where these are lining up. Okay. Where these are in it is irrelevant. It just needs it to be in order. It doesn't care where it is in placement of the body, right? So if you're like, oh, well, this is my lower back, so that would be here, and I'll select that, and then I'll assign that selected bone. I'll oh, cancel. I'll select my lower back, underscore SK, and assign selected bone. And then you may think and say, oh, okay, this bone right here is in the right in the middle. It's about right here, right? So I'll make spine five here, um, right here, and then my upper back is spine eight or spine nine, right? And so we want to try to match those up sometimes visually to make them, you know, make sense in our mind with the picture that we're seeing here. But you kind of have to ignore that. What it's looking for is that they're just in a row. One, two, and three, down the line here. Um, and it doesn't matter where they are. It's just going to be using that motion capture data to uh, assign and, and split up the rotation uh, and the motion uh, into the spines that you have selected. Okay, So we'll come in. We've got our lower back there. Our mid-back will go to spine two, assign selected bone. Then we'll come to our upper back and spine three, assign selected bone. Okay, so those three are all set up and we're all done with that. We'll just come back to this and that will take us back to our last view right here. Um, and that is great. Uh, so right here it's showing, oh, for like our clavicle here, it's got another, another view that we can come into. So we'll do our left clavicle here. We'll go to this first one. It doesn't matter if there are more slots than you have bones. They're just trying to be um, as receptive to multiple types of rigs as possible so that you get a real dynamic range of, of rigs and, and it'll accommodate it um, really well. So we'll just click on this first one and assign the selected bone, and we'll come back out. And you'll notice because my bone here has a left underscore L underscore, this already picks up the fact that is, there's mirroring in my bones. And as soon as it sees that left underscore, uh, it's going to find the right one, and it places it in there for me automatically. So I don't have to worry about going and doing the other side. Uh, you can do the right or left. It'll do it either way. As long as your bones are named correctly, it's going to do it for you. So it is super awesome. So we're going to go down our left shoulder, and we'll click on our left arm, assign selected bone, come to our elbow, which will be our left forearm. We'll do assign selected bone. You know, so we have a forearm uh, joint here. We're not going to worry about that. It doesn't need that information there. Um, these little look-through views um, are for roll functions, for twisting functions. So I guess we could put that in, in that one spot, since this is a rolling joint here. Um, and they have the same up here for your shoulder as well. So sometimes in rigs, you'll see multiple joints, joints coming down the shoulder. And it's just so you get a natural twisting that happens down the bone as opposed to it all pinching like you would like a balloon animal, right? You grab a balloon animal, you twist it, and it pinches. Right? And that's what would happen when we rotate 
off of our joint here as it pinches, right? Just like that. Pinches in. And so you'll sometimes see that in, in other rigs. We're not going to worry about that for, for anything here, but that's what those joints here are looking at. So then we'll go to our wrist joint, and we'll come here, and we'll assign the selected bone there. Okay, so it's changed these yellow, and it's giving us this warning. One, if we look down here in our status line here, the human IK, it tells us everything that um, we're having errors or issues with. Okay, so the red X is telling us here we're missing the required bones. There's not enough information for it to be a full character um, definition. So we won't be able to hook up any uh, motion capture data to it. Okay, and the next is saying the right arm doesn't seem to be parallel to the x-axis, and the left arm doesn't seem to be parallel to the x-axis. Okay, so our x-axis is pointing down our bone, and so they are going to be a little bit different. They're not going to be 100% straight, uh, and that's by design. So it's accepting those, and it's going to be okay but it is giving that, us that warning that, hey, if these aren't exactly what we're looking for, you might have some undesired results, okay? Um, but we're not going to face anything like that here. Um, okay, you can go into the hand, and you can start assigning joints for all your thumbs and fingers. all the way down the line here, right? And it gives you these other options as well, even an extra finger there. Um, but if you don't have them, you don't need to worry about them, all right? So let's do this real quickly. Just like this. middle finger here. So sending these up for kind of what we're needing probably is a little overkill because uh, there's a lot of motion capture data that does not include fingers at all. It's usually just the wrist um, and the hand and then uh, the animator will have to add in fingers and things like that. So, okay, we'll do our pinky. All right. And last one. Okay, so there's our hand all set up. We've got that there. It's turned green. Left side has been done. And then we'll come back here. We've got a neck joint. And this allows for multiple neck joints. Uh, if we were doing a spline, uh, neck or a spline, spine, we would have a lot more joints, uh, but we are not. So we're just going to select that first one, assign the selected bone, and come back up, and then we just have our head. And our head is right here. Assign the selected bone right there. When I K, bone head. All right, we are almost done. Okay, we just have our hips or our pelvis. Sign that there, and then we have our left hip, left knee, left foot, and then again, it gives us even more options here. Okay, where we can come in and do this. We do have a toe base. We'll assign that. We'll come back out. Okay, look, our red X is gone. It just has a little warning sig uh, symbol up here, but it is accepting this definition. Maya says, okay, this is fine. Uh, we've got enough information. You could have more and get way more extensive with this with roll 
joints in there, um, but we don't need to. We really just need these for the basics, okay? So that is set up, and we can save that. Okay. Template name, sample bone, pelvis, prefix, pelvis underscore, and the path of where it's going to go. We'll call this our Tesla. Definition. We'll hit OK. So that just saves it. So if we opened up a different scene and we had her in here, uh, we could take care of them. We could just use that automatically. Okay? All right. So we have that. Everything is set up. Now we need a source. We need, we've got our character definition here. Now we need some motion capture data. Okay? So Maya has some um, already kind of cleaned up and ready to go just for sample. And uh, so the way that you would access that is you would go into your Windows, General Editors, and there's the Content Browser. You pull that up, and the Content Browser has this. It has examples underneath animation, underneath motion capture. You're going to have just a folder called Generic. Okay, and it has a README text in there. Okay, and this is the path of where that is. So if you were to follow this path and you found that and you open that up, it would tell you this. The animation examples have been moved online. Please consult the help and visit this address for more details. This address is a straight download. You put that in and it will automatically download a zip file with all those samples in there. So um, in previous versions, these samples were native. They were downloaded when you, had, when you first installed Maya, uh, but probably for file size um, and, and the fact that not everyone needs and uses these examples, uh, they put them up online. So you can do those. You can uh, download it. It'll come in. Um, I have already downloaded them and then take in and unzip them and then place them back into this motion capture um, folder under examples. Okay, so we have these examples here and then there's even a male and a female file that give you some examples there. These ones are pretty much ready to go right out the box. So if we're to say, hey, let's use this dance, we can click on that and we can right click on it and we can say import, okay? Does this do anything different than if you were to take a file and go file import? No, it doesn't. It's exactly the same. So you could find this file and you could drag it into your scene and we'll do the same thing. So the content browser is just a way for you to kind of search and quickly have them in locations that Maya already knows. So we'll bring in our dance one. Okay, we'll input that in. Okay, and you will actually get some data here. So it is brought in this, and if I open up the outliner. here. We can see there's this dance reference that has come in and with the hips and the whole joint system as well as a skin version here. Okay, And if you scrub along your timeline, we can see it dance around and move. Okay. So that's great. It has brought it in, but it isn't it isn't on our model yet. Okay. So what we'll do is now that we have this in here, the characters in there come in. And we have our Tesla character selected. And now 
under our source, it's going to give us that dance mocap example. Okay, so this is the source. This is what it is going to be referencing. And we're going to click on the dance mocap example. Okay. And it wants to lock this. And we can say yes. That's fine. And now our character is here. And look, we got some crazy stuff happening on this arm. Okay, so this could be a waiting issue that we're having, um, and uh, or it could just be that one of the joints that we put in it really didn't like. Okay, oh, oh it's snapping on and off. My guess is it's not liking this joint here very much at all. Okay. So, but you can see she now has all this animation data on her. And if we go back to our human IK, okay, so now this is connected, right? We're not always going to want it connected, but this is a great way to kind of move the character around. She's bending, she's folding, and she's putting in these positions where we can kind of go in and we can see a lot better what our skin weight is doing. All right, so we can then come in and start painting weight in an area. To kind of work with that. And just to kind of test, I think that it's just not like in this forearm joint So uh, when you're done and you don't want to use this anymore, then you can come up um, and if you can click on none, and then all of a sudden that will break the influence on here. But the problem is that it's going to freeze it in that position. Okay, And we want to get it back to its T-pose, back to its stamps. So we'll click stamps. And that sets it there. But it actually still does have influence over the character. So if we move this, we were locking out all these other joints. They're not following like we normally would want them to. So once we've changed her back over to stance, now we can click on none. Okay, now there's no influence on it. We can move it again. It's going to go back to uh, the skeleton control just as we had set it. So if we go back to the definition of our Tesla character, we can go in here and we can just clear this. Sorry, this is about the extent that I use this tool for. So a lot of these little nuancey things. Let's clear this. Oh, 
Oh, this is why I have it locked. That makes sense. Okay, so I can clear that, come back up, and I can clear my other one. There we go. Sorry. Okay, so we'll lock that again and turn back on our dance. Come in here. Okay, it looks like her forearm is acting correctly. Yeah. Yep, so I might have just had something on this joint. that it was not liking. So, okay. All right, so now we have this. So now we can go in and we can take a look at how she's deforming as she's moving. And we can go in and get her into a position You know, down like this, where she's really twisted, and we can kind of start seeing um, if we're having issues that we weren't noticing before, um, and we can start painting in some of that weight and making those changes with our paint weights tool. Okay. So we'll come back to our human IK here and we'll change the source back to stance and then to none. We'll frame our character here by hitting the F key. There we go. And that is all set up. Okay, so if I were to go in back to my Windows General Editor's content browser, and I were to say, oh, I want one of these female ones, Amelia or Carol, and I brought in one of these, Dance Nightclub 3. Sure. Right-click, import that. Okay, and it's in here. We come to our source, and we'll notice it's not here. It's gone. Why isn't it here? And you can go in and you can look at your outliner. And there it is. It's here. It's right here. Right? It's in our scene. And there's the joints right there that have that animation on it. But we're not getting it in our, in our drop down. The reason why is because there's no character definition for what you have imported. So in order to get this one to work on here, you would actually have to come in and go back to none for your character so that you can create a new character definition, character two. And then you'd have to go in and set this all up. But once that is set up, if you come to your source here, you'll have the character two will pop in there. So but you'd have to go through the same process, assigning all of these in here. All right, and once you did that, this turned green, or at least that yellow, then we know that it's accepted it. We have that in there. Um, and then we can apply that source to that. So if you ever get mocap from somewhere else and you're trying to set it up in the human IK system, you're importing it in, and you're, and, but you're not seeing it, you can't get it to connect, it's not in your drop-down menu, that's why. It doesn't have a character definition. So you need to create a character definition for that motion capture example so Maya knows what bones need to match with your bones, okay? Um, if your character comes in and it has a node at world zero here, 
which a lot of times in games they'll have a joint. That's right there, that reference uh, locator that's placed right here um, is for this right here. So and it was just a placement node that a game engine would use to place your character wherever in the world. And then it would base all of its animation off of that joint wherever it was placed. Okay, so that's it. That's it for mocap. So uh, it's super easy to get set up. Again, it, this is not an essential step for rigging. Okay, this is just a way that you can test your animation and see how it's looking. And, or not test your animation, I'm sorry, uh, to test your, your weighting of your skinning, right? So you can turn those on, you can have them move around, and then you can go into your paint weights tool and you can start painting weights on here when it's in its deformed position. And then you'll get a better readout of what things look like for when it's actually moving. Okay? All right. So that is it for the human IK and for this tutorial. I will see you in the next one.